the Wright State University Foundation homepage. To access this page, you'll just go to wright.edu slash foundation. On the homepage, to access the Students First Fund, you'll jump over here to the right-hand side and click Students First Fund. On this page, you'll see an introduction that outlines some of the most important information related to your project. You can also access the information session by clicking the link here. Down below, you'll see some specific project guidelines, as well as the online application and budget worksheet. After this, we're going to dive into the online application and budget worksheet so that you can have some specific questions answered. We've also provided examples of previous funding um, with some Wright State University newsroom stories and links here. These could be really great if you're looking to maybe jog some ideas, if you're really excited about the grants project, but don't have a specific direction you want to take. We also have some really great resources here that I highly recommend you check out. Um, we do have some of the actual applications that have been submitted in the past. So um, during our first year, we had two applications here where you're able to actually look at some of the things that were written. The application here has a slightly different format than what we've taken on this year. Um, this is a much bulkier application um, than what we've decided to move forward with. However, it may help you with some of the specific questions that you'll be tackling. We also have a frequently asked questions page here. So if you're looking for some specific information, this is going to be a great resource for you. If you don't see your question here, you do have the ability to go ahead and submit your name, email, and your question. And a representative from the Wright State Foundation will receive your question and be able to get back with you on that. We're going to go ahead and dive into the application now, um, and I'll go over some of the specifics. We have re-highlighted a lot of the information that you've already seen in the presentation here at the beginning of the application process, outlining different grant amounts that we're willing to consider, um, application restrictions, etc. You're more than welcome to reach out to Andrea, whose contact information has been listed here, or submit your question directly through the Foundation's webpage that we just took a look at. To begin, we'll need your information here uh, with your organization, name, title, email, and phone. Your organization can be your department if you're a faculty or staff member. You'll need to select your applicant role here. And we'll also need your supervisor or faculty advisor or staff advisor's information. This is applicable for both students, staff, and faculty who are looking to apply. Um, a lot of this just has to do with the um, seriousness of the project. Um, a lot of these are of great scale. Um, so it's going to help with, you know, making sure that you've taken all the right steps, that if we do award you this money, um, that your department is on board uh, with your idea. Um, it also goes um, hand in hand with the transition process. We've seen it before, um, especially in our student awarded applications, where there's a lot of transition within different organizations from year to year. And seeing as we're looking at stretching this across um, going into next fall, that's going to be a really key part. You'll need to title your project uh, with something that we can remember you by. And then what is the duration or the date of your event? Is this an ongoing mentorship program or is this an event happening on a single evening? After this step, you'll need to complete the executive summary. Please note that there is a 2500 character limit that includes spaces. I highly, highly recommend that you begin writing this out in a Word doc that you can save and go back to. And you'll need to address the following questions. Please describe the opportunity, challenge, or need to be addressed by the project and include factual data supporting your position. A lot of the projects that we've seen in the past um, start with the, you know, someone's noticing something that's missing from campus or they've seen something at another campus that they feel could benefit the student's success here at Wright State. That's going to be a great place to go ahead and introduce that is in the first part of your executive summary. If you have any facts or data, that's always going to help your case and we strongly recommend you insert that here. You'll also need to let us know the total number and people, um, as well as a brief demographic description of the population that will be served. Is this something that's going to specifically help the nursing students at the Lake Campus, like a mentorship program we've helped in the past? Or is this a very wide um, demographic, such as the seal that was placed on campus, that could impact current students, future students, guests of the university, and more? Please describe the uniqueness of your project and how and why it does or does not collaborate with other university organizations or programs. 
So in terms of uniqueness, um, is this something very similar that your department may have done in the past? Or is this something totally brand new? Is this going to collaborate with your department, for example? So we're going to ask that you go ahead and describe that here. Please describe any funding through the Students First Fund that you've requested, and please note that this is a one-time allocation. If applicable, how is your project sustainable? If this is a mentorship program, how is the amount that we're going to be funneling into your program, um, how is that going to be sustained in the future if you have any future costs? Uh, if this is some sort of an, an event that you want to have year after year, is this something that you're going to be able to fund in the future? Is your department looking into, if this is successful, um, continuing this program? Or again, it may be something where things are purchased uh, as a one-time use, such as the live scribe pens with the Office of Disability Services. Please list here the estimated funding amount that you've requested from the Students First Fund. You'll also have that amount listed in the budget template. After we go through this here, we're going to dive into our budget template, uh, so hopefully that'll clear up uh, that worksheet for you. You also have the option to upload any additional documents that could help explain or describe your project. Uh, this could include, again, um, we're going to link it back to a couple of the projects we funded in the past. When it was the uh, seal the deal opportunity, when we placed the seal on campus, we were able to provide photos of sketches that we were able to get from the Office of Marketing um, from other universities uh, of examples they've done. The live scribe pens could be linked to here. Um, so different examples um, for you to kind of consider of why you may want to upload additional documents. This is a statement that we'll have you read um, that you will need to agree to the terms of the funding in order to be considered. And then you'll be able to uh, submit this at the very end. Today we're going to review the Students First Fund by the Wright State University Foundation. The Students First Fund was a grants program created by the Wright State University Foundation to provide one-time funding to support the student experience and fund initiatives that will have a direct impact on student success. The application is open to all Wright State University students, faculty, and staff with a proposal to promote student success. There's $50,000 available in funding that will be distributed depending on the number and quality of the proposals that we receive. Student success can be defined in several different ways. So what types of projects will be considered for funding? This will include leadership programs, educational enhancement activities, workforce development activities and programs, community slash corporate engagement activities, mentoring programs, experiential learning activities, student life and campus engagement initiatives, and more. This list is definitely not a comprehensive list of all the things that the foundation is willing to cover. However, it is a great start. Some examples of prior grant recipients. Um, so there were 26 applications that we received in 2020. With only $50,000 available for students first fund grants, we were able to award 12 of those uh, ranging from $2,000 to $8,000. Some specific projects included the micro Raman spectroscopy instrument for the Department of Chemistry, an experiential learning project for late campus agriculture students, as well as new pianos for the Department of Theater, Dance, and Motion Pictures here at the main campus. There are some restrictions that we have on the Students First Fund grants. We are not looking to support scholarships or individual student support, standard operating expenses or salaries or benefits for people working on the project, as well as travel expenses unless there's something that will be integral to the program. Food and beverage requests should be kept to a minimum. And please remember that this is one-time funding, so you must be able to identify other sources of funding moving forward if this is an ongoing project. Please have all applications submitted no later than Friday, February 26th. We'll be looking to award the grants in April, and the funding will be available to use as early as the fall semester. To apply, you'll go to www.wright.edu slash studentsfirstfund. We're going to take a look at the Students First Fund grant application budget template. 
At the top of the application, you'll need to fill out your project title as well as your total project budget. This will include the total requested from students first funding, any additional requested funding from other location, as well as confirmed funding sources that you've already been able to receive for your project. In the first box, you'll see project expenses as well as your total. We've been able to suggest several categories on the left side. These may be edited uh, so that you can add or remove your own categories as needed. On the right hand side, you'll total what that amount will be. So for example, if you're purchasing flyers for an event that you're having, you'll list that under marketing and then total what that amount requested is on the right. You can give us some specifics over here as well. At the very bottom, you'll need to total your project expenses over here on the right hand side. We'd like to see a breakdown of your project funding. What you'll need to do is list any confirmed funding sources that you've already received from state university offices or organizations here on the right hand side. Or if you already have a guest speaker coming to your event or um, whatever your project may be, you can go ahead and list that, that they've donated their time and services under confirmed funding sources. If you have any outstanding requests for funds, you can also list them here in this area. And then to make this very clear, the amount you're requesting from the Students First Fund will be listed right here on the right hand side. And then you're going to total your total possible project funding. These numbers should all match the total project budget, expenses, and total project funding down here. You also have the option to add any additional budget notes at the bottom. And we'd also like to highlight that we're not looking to fund specific salary or benefits for projects. However, we are willing to look in a case-by-case -case basis for uh, facilitators, guest speakers, uh, what have you, depending on the project. And we're also not looking to fund any specific travel costs unless it's something that's very integral to your project.